Referring to the Hubble Space Telescope, people will definitely remember a workhorse cosmic observatory for astronomers around the world since its launch in 1990. It has been dazzling with dramatic stellar imagery and enabled important discoveries such as the age of the universe and the moons of Pluto. NASA believes the Hubble remains highly productive until at least the late 2020s or 2030s. However, many components of the telescope have spent decades in an unforgiving environment of space, raising unsurprising concerns about their longevity. More importantly, the inexorable march of time, gravity, and Earth's atmosphere means Hubble is guaranteed to eventually re-enter that atmosphere and burn up without intervention. That terrible demise could come as early as the mid-2030s. However, the story is about to change as NASA and SpaceX just officially announced a plan to boost Hubble Telescope's orbit with Dragon. So how will this happen, and is it really feasible? Let's find out today in our episode of Alpha Tech. NASA and SpaceX have recently signed a Space Act Agreement to conduct a six-month study to determine the practicability of Dragon docking with the 32-year-old telescope and boosting it into higher orbit. The study is not exclusive, meaning other companies can propose similar concepts with alternative rockets and spacecraft. NASA and SpaceX will spend the next six or so months discussing whether it's possible to use Dragon to boost the telescope's orbit back to a nominal 600 kilometers or around 372 miles. Both parties say that the agreement would also investigate the possibility of Dragon servicing missions, which could be even more significant for Hubble. While a boost that large would likely keep it in orbit for decades to come, there's no guarantee the telescope would remain functional to take full advantage of the extra time it would have. During the fifth and final space shuttle servicing mission, NASA astronauts installed a docking adapter soft capture mechanism on the Hubble telescope. Although no concrete plan exists for any additional servicing missions, the forward-facing installation of that adapter has made the feasibility study possible. In theory, that docking adapter could make boosting Hubble's orbit far more feasible, safe, and affordable than a shuttle-style crew servicing mission. SpaceX's Cargo Dragon 2 spacecraft has the same autonomous docking capability its crewed sibling has and costs less to launch and operate. So it's not inconceivable that an uncrewed Dragon could autonomously dock with Hubble and boost its orbit. Jessica Jensen, SpaceX's VP of Customer Operations and Integration, says an uncrewed option will be studied alongside crewed servicing and orbit boost alternatives. According to Patrick Krauss, NASA's Hubble Space Telescope Project Manager, without a reboost, NASA would need to consider a separate mission to ensure a controlled deorbit of the massive telescope by the end of the decade. The study's targeted boost of 40 to 70 kilometers, meanwhile, could extend the longevity of Hubble's orbit by 15 to 20 years or well into the 2050s. But as a feasibility study, there's a chance that it will conclude that using Dragon, crude or uncrewed, to boost serviced HST isn't feasible. Ordinarily, the most likely outcome would be a conclusion that the project is feasible from a technical perspective, but out of reach from a financial perspective. This is when we enter billionaire and private astronaut Jared Isaacman, who was directly involved in the September 29th press conference. The agreement comes after SpaceX and the Polaris program, a series of private missions self-funded by billionaire Jared Isaacman, approached NASA about potential servicing missions, including the Hubble Space Telescope. Isaacman is the first private citizen to command an orbital spaceflight when he led a crew of four aboard SpaceX's Dragon, and that was in 2021 on the Inspiration4 mission. With Polaris, he's seeking to push the boundaries of private space exploration outward. The first Polaris mission is scheduled March 2023 on Dragon and will fly at an altitude of 1,400 kilometers while also conducting the first private spacewalks. When asked about the synergies between Polaris program, SpaceX, and NASA, Isaacman revealed that he and SpaceX are willing to undertake a six Hubble servicing mission, more or less pro bono, with little or no potential cost to the government. According to Isaacman, it's possible that the study could result in a Hubble servicing mission becoming the second Polaris program mission. Next, with the increasing importance of Dragon as well as avoiding the risk from a Starship launch in Florida, SpaceX is moving forward with plans to build a second Dragon launch pad. SpaceX began studying the possibility of modifying the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station LC-40 pad for Dragon missions earlier this year. Three months later, the partners have committed to that plan and according to SpaceX, hardware for the required modifications is already in the works. 
Located just 1,000 feet or 300 meters east of 39A's existing Falcon and Dragon launch facility and access tower, Starship's unlikely to have much of an impact during nominal operation, but the program does have a history of building prototypes that occasionally explode. Until late 2023, at the absolute earliest, SpaceX's Crew Dragon is the only spacecraft capable of sustaining NASA's presence at the ISS. Years behind schedule, Boeing's Starliner crew capsule is scheduled to attempt its first crewed test flight, or CTF, no sooner than February 2023. So if a Starship launch failed and destroyed Pad 39A's Falcon and Dragon facility at some point in the next 12 to 18 months, it could easily threaten NASA's ability to maintain the ISS if Boeing is unable to take over. Even though SpaceX would never risk launching Starship out of Pad 39A if it knew there was a high risk of the new rocket failing and harming Dragon operations, NASA's in the business of ensuring that contingencies exist in case of unlikely but catastrophic events. It doesn't matter if Starship probably won't explode or if Starliner will probably be ready to take over. The risk is always there and SpaceX and NASA must be ready for that possibility. Nothing's known about the nature of the modifications that LC-40 would require, but more likely than not, NASA would require SpaceX to develop something similar to Pad 39A's facility. That would involve building a new crew access tower, crew access arm, escape system, and on-site bunker for astronauts. Given that the need for a backup Dragon launch pad comes largely at NASA's behest, there's a good chance the agency will require that backup is in place before SpaceX is allowed to launch Starship out of 39A. Earlier this month, CEO Elon Musk delayed his estimate for the first Florida Starship launch from late 2022 to Q2 2023. It's highly unlikely that SpaceX will be able to finish modifying LC-40 by Q2 2023. SpaceX will have to undertake the already challenging, time-sensitive construction project on a high-security military base and well within the blast radius of the single most active launch pad in the world. Much of the custom hardware required could have significant lead times, further extending the construction timeline. Unless SpaceX is willing to seriously constrain LC-40's launch cadence, which would likely make its goal of 60-plus launches in 2022 and up to 100 Falcon launches in 2023 impossible, the work will take even longer than it would under ordinary circumstance. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, subscribe, press that like button, and share your ideas in the comment section below. Your support motivates us to create more quality videos. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.